Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bones Eye. On today's episode, we have to take some inventory to be better prepared for the March Madness. The sun is out in all its glory. It is about 48 hours before the first official minutes of spring. Yeah, somewhere around 1030, I think, on the 20th of March this year, spring will officially, will spring. It'll have sprung. Um, it's about 1030 on Friday, the uh, 18th of March, and I should be in school. But my stepson, Jake, is not feeling so great today. He wasn't feeling so great the last couple of days. And so yesterday, my wife left work early to take care. And then today, he just didn't go. So we took the backgammon and the checkerboards out. We got some great checker games in. The backgammon has been done. So it was time for a little break from the games. And now he's watching a little TV. So while he does that, I thought I'd crank out one of the most important things that I probably should do more often. And that's just take inventory of what I got. The first place I'm going to check with my inventory is the cabin cold frame. So here we are taking a sneak peek. So I've got my big giant boxwood back there. That's going to be in a pot this spring. I want to get that into a pot. We've got these two uh, weeping willows that have been in a pot for a couple of years now. Um, they're a little bit uh, close to the pencil thickness size. And you can see they've leafed out already. So I really should repot those now if I'm going to because, well, now they're leafing out. Down below, I have some more of my boxwood. So I've got the variegateds there. I want to get one of those into a pot for sure. Um, and then I got the little one back there. And I got a couple more in the garage that we uh, took out when I recently redid this boxwood. A little bright there with the sun. Let me stop this down a couple stops. Here we go. Uh, there we go, a little shade. Um, so there's the boxwood I just re uh, repotted. It was the Too Face, right? Um, and so we had some discussions about how that one had some uh, death on there, uh, whether it was a fungus or not, where that still remains to be seen. But this is a quick little update. A week later, the uh, boxwood is sitting here in its glory. Uh, some of my Catoni asters that are already in pots. Uh, this right here, my Japanese quince, is in a pot. I, I just repotted that one recently. We're going to let that go another full year before we repot it. And everything back there on the lower bench, some more Catoni asters. One of my big uh, barberries. Um, yeah, that's been in a pot now for a good year. Um, I put it in a pot, no, is it maybe two years ago? Um, these are pots from uh, plants from my father's yard, rather. And uh, I want to make sure that their roots are really going to be uh, um, forming uh, good and thick and healthy before I do any uh, major things to this. So it doesn't need a repot. The other uh, barberry up in the corner up there, that's going to be a fun one. Um, that one has some real fun uh, exposed roots. Uh, over the front there, and uh, it's got some little tiny uh, uh, growth on there. So, But that was potted again a year or two ago, and we just wanna make sure the roots are really healthy this year. So nothing has to be done there. I got another version of a willow up here, or a, a pussy willow, yeah, pussy willow here that I got from a friend from MBS. Um, uh, I don't know if it's a pink pissy pussy willow. I might consider doing that one in the spring. And then I have to double check. I completely forgot the variety of this one back here. I got to talk with Candace from Minnesota Bonsai. She uh, gave me this one last year too. Um, and so that one's looking all nice. Uh, I love the shape on that one. It's got some good movement. Um, and it's not in a bonsai soil, right? So these two, I probably have to repot. So my big debate is the Japanese uh, maple. So the Acer palmatum. And so uh, this guy right here, I was going to hopefully take some of these long whippy branches and bring them around and possibly try my first uh, approach graft or thread graft. I have yet to do an approach or th thread graft. And this was the tree that I was going to experiment on it because it had a big thick trunk and it was really super tall. I want to bring it down lower. I've chopped it up there a little bit, a couple times. And I've got some long growth from this lower branch down here in the back. So there's that branch right there that kind of has some really fun movement. So I could chop this tree right here and then make that the new tree possibly, but that's a major cut down low. So I thought I would try uh, my luck at some approach grafting and or thread grafting. Now my concern about this uh, thread graft on this one is um, the uh, buds on these guys right here. Let's get you a little brighter and closer here. The thread grafts right here, if I push this through, there's the double leaves right there, the buds. That's already twice as thick as this branch. That's a big hole in the tree to get that through. So these buds are starting to swell. They're a little too thick, I think, already. I may have lost my window. Um, and they're a little bit bigger on some of the taller ones back there. So I think this might end up being an approach graft, and we can try that. So to do that, I probably should leave this 
tree in the big box for one more season. I really would love to get this into a bonsai pot, but I don't have as much foliage on top this year once it pushes out its growth. Um, but I'm, I'm, I don't know, this is a question mark. With most of our cold winter days uh, leaving us, we're gonna be at 60 again on Sunday, by the way, to bring in the first day of spring, and then upper 50s on Monday, and then back to, you know, mid to upper 40s. But the cold, cold weather is probably gone, so I took away the tarp, I took away my protection layer here. Um, I do see some browning on this tree. Uh, since we did our chop, and I don't remember if it was this brown, I did the chop, or I just stressed this thing out big time. But all the growth down in the bottom main section that I'm worried about, uh, or that I, I, I know I'm gonna keep, is all still uh, really pretty green. So we're gonna have to monitor this close, and a lot of these branches we're gonna be thinning out anyway. And so I have to decide if I'm gonna repot this one or not. Will it look healthy enough in the next couple of weeks for me to th think about repotting it or just let it push out some growth in this great big nursery uh, container for one more season? So I'll have to put this with a question mark on my notes as well. So the hemlock, a question mark. I'm in the vegetable garden area now where most of my trees that uh, stay out all winter are kept to keep away from the critters. We've had a lot of critter chop issues, so it's been pretty frustrating. I have these three lilac trees. So the lilac bushes that are in our yard have been around for 30 plus years and uh, I've been slowly digging them up to make room for my bonsai benches and uh, I've kept some of the trees just kind of in the back under the pine tree and sometimes I've kept them just loose on the dirt and they just start to reroot themselves automatically without any soil over them or anything. So these lilac are usually very, very sturdy, very hardy plants and grow very, very fast. So they're fun uh, specimens to uh, practice bonsai on. So I got this little one right here and uh, the critter got some of it down here. You can't see because of the bar here, but it had a nice angle to the left and it's got this new branch up here. Who knows what's gonna happen with that one. This one was a tall one, tall, skinny. I just kind of threw it in the back, not knowing if I'd ever keep it because it's super straight. But what's nice about these trees, because they're so old, is they do have a little bit of rough bark texture, so they already look old. So if I can get some uh, uh, branches on here and have some growth, it'll be really fun to see. So we've got these two over here, and this is my, my gem. My, uh, I'm really excited about this one. I hope there's not too much critter chew down here. I don't think so, but even if so, the lilacs that I've had, you know, you can have damage on here and rip some of these branches off and you're gonna get growth. And they, they put up a whole bunch of suckers, so they're really easy to do. So this is a four trunk tree, multi-trunk. And these trunks back here are all probably one and a half to two inches wide. Maybe this one's pushing two and a half and this one's maybe three inches in diameter. So really big, the whole base down below is like five to six inches around down here. Again, this is in your way a little bit. My, it's still frozen to the ground, so I can't take it off. Um, but there's some, there's some old branch holes on here in Marks to make this look super old, and it's a nice multi-trunk looking tree. And you can see how profusely these bud back. So we not only have them on the tips, but way back here, there's one back here, uh, right about, right about, right about here on this, this trunk right back here has this one. This branch over here a little bit lower and then one back on the side here so I could cut this tree down to here this year and then start these new branches right here. This one's got three on, one way low down here, um, one on this side, one here, and then one on the back. So there's all kinds of new growth. Um, the back budding is so great on these lilacs. Now these are big lilacs, not the Little Miss Kim lilacs or the Japanese lilacs where they have the smaller leaves and uh, smaller flowers. These do produce the big buds. I've never had a bud on a bonsai for my lilac collection so far. Um, but this was just thrown into this pot last year, and this year I think I'm gonna get it into a bonsai pot. I've got all this uh, back budding right here. All these are gonna produce uh, uh, branches this year, and it'll thicken really up uh, really nicely. And then we'll just kind of see where we take it from here. So this one definitely is gonna go on my list for repots. I just gotta make sure I have a pot that's big enough. So that'll be part two later on today, is after I get the list of trees that I wanna repot, do I even have pots to put them in? And of course, this is a little late to be thinking about pots when you want to buy them because now in the springtime, everybody's repotting and all the places that sell pots online, they're out of all the cool ones because everybody took all the cool ones. There's a couple of websites I visited and all the ones that I want, they're, all, they're sold out. They're out of stock. It's only March 18th. They're gone. Yeah, you got to think of this stuff in the fall or the winter latest to make sure you have enough pots for the spring. But I have some, we'll do that inventory next, but let's keep looking at the trees. Here's another big question mark for a repot for this spring. So, um, 
and your maples are now, uh, they've become what people will, will uh, label as an invasive species. Um, I don't think they sell a lot of Amur maples in a lot of nurseries anymore. Um, but as bonsai, when we keep real close tabs on them, we're not going to have uh, the seeds blowing all over the over the uh, neighborhood and getting all kinds of amures to uh, overpopulate people's yards and stuff. So this, though, was a amur maple that was with a bunch of them, like six, seven, eight of them. And a friend of mine from Minnesota Bonsai Society and I, um, he's, a, he's a contractor, and he was working on this house, and they didn't want these... these uh, Amur kind of bush hedgy kind of things anymore so they took them all out he and I grabbed a couple each and this is one of them that I grabbed that's a multi trunk huge tree this trunk right here has this hole in it so really cool fun um, uh, characteristic to it it's got this really I cut this big one off here we'll have to work on that there's one that was cut off in here and here um, so these grow like weeds too so what what a great tree to practice bonsai on um, it's a very big tree I do not think I have a pot that'll support this but I would like to get it um, um, well sort it out with the roots put some pumice more pumice in here and less of the dirt that it came from this spring and then uh, then maybe get into a bonsai pot in a couple more years um, but I will make a smaller custom-made box probably for this one so that'll have to be added to the inventory list I have a U or a taxis underneath here um, that was sitting in these, uh, this box for uh, the last couple years. They were cuttings. And so I'm hoping to maybe get that into a pot this year. Um, there's a whole bunch of trees in there, so we'll have to like sort it out and see if there's good enough roots to put those in a pot. I've got the um, Colorado Blue Spruce here too that up at the cabin last year. This was the cabin episode, Cabin Bonesai, the first tree I worked on at the cabin. I left it into the nursery pot. It's a big one. Got a couple of big uh, sores down there, big cuts. Um, and so I don't know if I'm going to take those branches off or what we're going to do. Uh, but I might do a little styling on this tree here before the push of growth. Uh, I'm, I'm probably getting a little bit late to do the styling. Uh, but I think I might have a little window here to do that. Otherwise, I'm just going to get into a pot. Back in the corner over there, we have our collection of black spruces from the collection last year when we went and harvested some uh, tamaracks. Uh, the larches up there in northern Minnesota. We got a little collection of small black spruces. We'll see if those survive. There's one tamarack in the middle in there. And so we'll just keep that all uh, in its pot this year. No repotting. Those roots are super delicate from taking them out of the ground, the, um, the, the bogs up there. And so there's not a ton of roots. And so we're going to keep it really moist. There's a lot of pumice in there and the sphagnum moss. We'll keep those alive. Same with this uh, cluster right here. So this is the uh, groupings of larch that I put in here. And so that's also in a nursery pot with all kinds of sphagnum moss. We've got some pumice down there. We're not going to put these into a pot. They're going to have to recover this entire year before we even consider putting those into a bonsai pot. Now that said, if I climb over here and look back there, so those larches in those black containers right there, those are the ones I collected two years ago. So they had all of last year to really pump out some new roots. Those we're going to check out. So one, two, three, four, five. We've got five larches to add to our list. And I might put some of those larches into our Minnesota larch forest. Because if you recall, unfortunately, one of the sad parts of bonsai is bonsai dye. And of that forest of five larches that I got on sale from the discount section at my favorite nursery store in town, the four on the right died. So we might put some of these larches into this forest and revive it. In a recent video, we talked about the mugo pine or the mugo pine. Some people say it mugo, some people say it mugo. I say them both ways because I just say them both ways because I maybe don't think about it as much as I should when I say it. We got a Scots pine there. We're going to repot that one. This one, if you remember, we're going to wait on the mugo until the summertime. Uh, rumor has it, I've been doing some research, that they like a summer repot more than spring. This will be the first time I'll try that because each one I've had so far, I've done a spring repot and it lasted less than a year. Ah, and the critter trot trees. So these are two American elms and at the very bottom of that one, they didn't get because there was snow on there for so long, they chewed down to about two inches off the ground. So that's gonna be a chop. We're gonna hope it stays alive. Same thing on that one, just a little less bark all the way around. So those are just gonna be chops this spring. I'll probably do that maybe even today. And then we have the big larch. Big larch in the 30 gallon container, super big. 
I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this one. I either have to do some uh, wiring right now and trim this thing up right now and get it ready. And I wanna do that Alpine look on this one with all the branches drooping way down. So an Alpine vibe, um, like the Alpine larch uh, in the more in the mountainous regions. In Minnesota, we grow them a little bit different up in the bogs. They're stick straight up and down a lot of times. Um, but uh, we might make some, put some movement on here and give it an Alpine feel. My other possibility with this tree is I thought of possibly laying this one down and trying my luck at another raft. It's been a while since I've tried a raft style and this one has enough big branches that could just pop up and become new trees and make a mini forest. And there's just enough movement in there where if I add a little bit more with some real big structural wire, I can make the forest, the raft forest, have a little bit of a design, a little bit of color, a little bit of pizzazz to it. So maybe laying this one down for a raft style. Stay tuned for that one, but there's another repot regardless. So the last area for me to check for the outside trees to be repotted, we have the great big black spruce in here, which has lost a fair amount of needles, so I don't think it's gonna be surviving this year, but uh, who knows, there's still some life to it. We've got uh, down below here, we have the weeping willow in a log that has leafed out, that's just fine. I've got my Siberian forest, they're fine. My trident maple is in a pot. Here we've got a Japanese maple in a, in a just a nursery uh, container. We've got a couple of leaves brewing in here. Right down here, some red leaves popping. We've got a bud right there and a couple up here. So this is coming to life. That we can get into a bonsai pot maybe next year. Um, I probably should put it in a smaller pot though. Let's come over here a little bit more. There we go. Yeah. And then back there, there's a Japanese maple in a, just in a nursery pot that we could maybe see if we'd put that in a bonsai pot, but it uh, needs a lot of growth, so we'll probably just leave it there. We've got a lot of cuttings up here. So let's take a peek at our cuttings. I've got a cutting here, I've got a cutting here, about pencil thickness, a couple cuttings here. This one has some nice cute little movement for a little tree, but it's already got some leaves on it up here. Um, this one looks like it's maybe has perished. This one's got some buds on it. Back here, this one looks like it perished. These are all small little uh, uh, cuttings. Uh, this one's got some nice uh, buds that are ready to pop out. This one's got some buds to pop out. So we might be able to put some of these into bonsai pots, but they're so small, it would have to be a cute little shoheen tree. You know, that under eight inches tree. Um, or we maybe can combine these into a forest scene in a couple of my oval pots or something and have a little Japanese forest uh, developing. The rest of them are all in pots ready to go. The only other consideration I'll, I have this year is I've got my elm, my Chinese elm over rock, uh, that it's, uh, it just, I just have to think about this one. I might repot it this year. I think it's been in this pot for two years again. Um, so I wanna see where the roots have grown. Some of the upper roots have not lasted, so I gotta figure that out. But I wanna clean up this tree at least before the spring push, but I might repot that one. So really, the only thing I'd repot is some of these maple cuttings, so maybe three to five, or maybe they'll all go into one forest. Part two of my inventory for this March Madness is to see what kind of pots I have available for the trees that I think I'm gonna repot. My biggest question is I have a lot of trees out there that are really big. Some of the ones I showed you today are not gonna fit in these pots. We've got about uh, eight, uh, 12, 12 to 14 inches here. This is probably a 10 to 12. We have a nice oval one that's 12 uh, inches or so. We got an even bigger oval one that's the 14 to 16 range. Ooh, a nice little uh, ceramic one there, that's nice. We've got a, a narrow oval one here. So, let's see, we've got, we've got, we've got five that are in the 12 inch range. This one also is in the 12 inch range. It's a flat square. So we have six, six in the 12 inch range, two of them flat, really shallow. We've got a 12 inch ceramic blue. This is an older pot. And I've got a nice oval brown one here. That's also in that eight, eight inch range. Here's a pretty one. Got some really nice fancy legs on this one. This will be fun to put a tree in there. That's also in that nine inch range. Then I have a black one here. Got my thin black one. This also is a very unique, kind of a stone looking pot. Might get a tree in that this year. And then there's this great big tray here. Now this is a really fun tray. And I'm gonna get a uh, drill bit and drill some holes in here. And I'm gonna get a forest in here someday. 
So it's got a real nice solid look to it. This is stamped. This is a really nice pot. Makes me a little nervous about cutting into it, but um, it is more of a tray than a pot, right? So we're gonna have to drill a couple of holes in here and uh, this will be a really nice shallow uh, forest planting someday. I've had that for a long time and haven't found that perfect match for it yet. We're gonna go six 12 inches, six nine inches for length and a couple that are just shy under that. So that's the garage pots. Now we gotta go down into the basement. About 20 trees, I was right, 15 to 20 trees, probably 15 on the low end, 20 on the high end. I'm not sure I'm gonna repot all those little boxwoods. That would require some of my littler pots. So I've got a couple of big ones I ordered online before the spring push. So I got another flat oval in the 12 inch range, so we can add that. And I ordered, I ordered two mica pots this year in the oval. I like the oval style. These are really big. This is that probably 12 inch range. So we got two 12 inch micas, so that's really nice. And I bought the bigger ovals. So I got these smaller ones, but I got a couple bigger ones that we can have some bigger forests in. So those will be for forest planting. And that'll be, uh, that's the, probably the, uh, yeah, probably the 14 to 16 inch range. So now I have up here, of course, I always end up having about a half a dozen to a dozen of these uh, plastic training pots around. I'm not gonna include those in my inventory because I know I always have some around. This is an oval one, the same size. So if I have some trees, I know I have some of those. Down here is also a lot of smalls. These are all six inches or less, except for the bottom three over here. And I got one deep one here. So I have a, a pot that's kind of one of more of your cascading style uh, pots. So that's a bigger cascade. So I will say that I have eight inch cascade. And then we have this, uh, we added that one. And we have a couple here. I have one that has some nice uh, kind of patina bumps on there. It's a round pot. I have one really nice round pot. I don't have a ton of those. And then there's one underneath it that's a blue ceramic that's also eight inches. So it's that eight to nine inch range. And then I have a whole bunch of these little ones. You know, I have a really fun, this Japanese one that I've had some uh, ficus in before. I've got some really nice small ones that are some old ceramic ones. Uh, a couple uh, with some interesting shapes. These are all small ones. If I want to put some of those in there, I save a lot of those for my uh, ficus trees, my tropical trees. Last but certainly not least, I have a couple of new pots that I acquired in the last year. I'm very excited about the pots. I just don't know exactly what tree's gonna go in there. Um, this pot was just an online purchase. It's just kind of a, your kind of run of your meal uh, factory uh, blown or fract factory created uh, a ceramic pot. It's kind of a matte finish. Um, so it looks kind of a little bit more rustic and old. There's even some bumps on it, like there's some patina on it and everything. It's not a very expensive pot, but there's another, um, well, that's probably a nine incher, but deeper. So that's a bigger one. Um, I wanna make special note of these pots. I got a couple more small ones, but I do have a long oval that's nine inches long and it's um, a shallow one. And I got these three pots from my good buddy, Henry, from Henry Two Bonsai. So thank you, Henry, for sending these in the mail. Um, Henry asked me if he could send me something. I said, well, okay. And all of a sudden this package came in the mail and I got four pots. Now, unfortunately, the biggest pot he sent me was about this size and it was a blue ceramic pot, but one corner was completely crashed in. So uh, the postal service maybe wasn't as friendly to that package as they could have been. But this really nice uh, pot here, I'm really excited to get a little forest in this really super shallow tray pot. So super excited about that. Thank you, Henry. I do appreciate it. You want to check out Henry Two Bonsai. Uh, he is just exploring the bonsai world, been for years, and uh, it's fun to watch him uh, explore and learn new stuff. These next three pots, if you are paying close attention and you can recognize pots, I can't. I know one pot in this world, and it's a Sarah Rayner pot. If I look at a pot and have any idea of what it is, it's usually a Sarah Rayner pot. Sarah Rayner, uh, Sarah Rayner is from Red Wing, Minnesota, and she is one of the premier potters in the country, even in the world, renowned. And uh, I picked up a couple of pots last year, but before I get to those two, and this, I was one of the first numbers drawn. I don't win raffles very often, um, but I have it at the Minnesota Bonsai Society, so it's been really cool. And I had my first pick, and I picked this really nice, as a bonsai enthusiast, you can never have too many pots. And when that tree is there and ready, boom, I'll have it. It'll be fun. Last year, when I went down to visit Sarah, I got to go see her at her studio, uh, see where the magic happens. It's fantastic. So this one has kind of this, uh, kind of this black, charcoal gray, black, almost there's some tan highlights here. Um, and you just, you get little subtle hints of blue in it. Just a little bit, super dark midnight blue, if you will. 
And then I did pick up another one that has kind of some of those golden yellow uh, uh, hints again. I think I thought at one point that I'd put a couple of larches in here. Um, and when you have the larch turn to that brilliant uh, gold in the fall, the larch color, golden larches, I thought this would just be a really cool thing to have this pot. This just speaks kind of that rich earthy tone fall colors. Even if you had like um, um, kind of a beech tree, I do beech trees turn yellow and I'm, I'm more familiar with the birch and when a birch tree goes really, really yellow and the poplar trees, if I had a poplar and a beech or a birch that turns yellow in this pot with this again with the, with the kind of gold yellowish hint here, um, and that would make the trunk stand out with the big yellow leaves and the kind of yellowish gold pot and then the trunk, you'd see the silhouette of the trunk, I feel. I'm not sure which trees are going to go into these pots, but I'm super excited. I'm often super excited about bonsai. So we'll add these to the inventory list and then I think today we are going to do a little repot. I think I've decided to put all my little maple cuttings into a forest. I'm pretty set now to make my maple forest. We're going to make our maple forest. i got to pick the pot. I'm going to see how the root structure is. But before we do that, we have to shed some light on the subject here. So here's a look at the box that came. So three stands, three soft boxes, two with five bulbs in there, and then one that can hang over the top so I can get the purest and the cleanest and the brightest image when I do my YouTube videos so people can see the trees, the cuts, the buds coming out. You know, getting that in the mail is sometimes as exciting as getting bonsai stuff. So we got these together, we put the stands up, we got the boxes all put together, the soft boxes, the diffuser is on there, and now it is time to turn on the lights. So without further ado, let's turn on the lights. There we go, we have some lights. So these are super bright lights. I've got a double diffuser on the ones in front of me and off to the side, there's a diffuser up at the top here, and we'll hopefully get some really good light shed onto these trees for you in the future video. So super excited to show you that. I can't wait to see the results here. So let's dig into the pots. Um, so we've got a couple of Japanese uh, maples here. Uh, these three are the most uh, uh, secure, I think, as far as, and, and this one, these four, this one's a little questionable, so we might lose that one, but we're gonna have to just go for it, right? So, you know, it's getting warm in here. It is the afternoon, so that means the uh, heater has turned on, so it's time to take off the uh, flannel shirt and dig into our bonsai. So we have four, cu five cuttings here, and we're taking for one of my Japanese maples outside. Very gentle with this. Oh, look at that. It's alive, but where are all the roots? Ooh, I have to be very gentle with that. I've got roots, but they're all through the screen. Oh, yeah, look at that. We're going to have to reassess. We have life after the cold frame. We have buds starting to grow, but we don't have roots forming down below. And here I expected roots to be forming. Look at that. Life to the tree, life to the tree with, with buds, no roots. Do I dare take this one out? Let's get my chopstick. We don't want to damage any of these roots. We actually have more than just a stick. That's what I thought I would see on all of these. Ah, silly, silly me. Not quite, huh? So we're going to have to go ahead and we're going to have to figure out what our next option is. Now you can bare root Japanese maples, so we got this pretty bare rooted. If I put this in some soil and put it here in the plant room and let it wake up and continue to leaf out and let the roots start to do their thing, that would be one option. Otherwise, I put it back in the plant room. The buds are wanting to push, so I could put them back in the um, cold frame and I think this is what I'll do. I will pot them in one pot and I'm going to get my I'm going to get my warming mat, my heat mat, and I'm going to plug it out in the cold frame. And I'm going to make sure the roots get a lot of heat over the course of the next couple weeks in the cold frame before we can bring this thing outside and hopefully the warmth in the root structure below this potting will get this to uh, continue to consider uh, budding uh, some roots here. Here's what we're going to do. I've got a pot here, one of my plastic ones. I'm going to use this recycled soil. We're going to get some nice soil in there. And then I think I'm just going to re-clip these, score them a little bit, give them some rooting powder, and we're just going to start over. We've got life in the branches. They're not dead. And so we'll see if we can get these rooted. Tree number one. Clean cut. 
plenty of cambium. I'm gonna score this on this side and this side. There's two buds right where I'm scoring there. I've got a little bit of rooting hormone here, and here we go. I'm gonna get a nice big hole in there and put it right at the bottom. A lot of times your Japanese maples won't need rooting hormone, but in this case, I wanna have as much success and much um, advantages in my favor. So this didn't turn out exactly as I was hoping it would. You never know what you're gonna get. I thought all of those, as they were greening up, looked like we had plenty of potential to have plenty of roots down in there. I was glad that they were all alive and having some green. All right, so this is very moist soil, so don't have to worry too much about that. So we're gonna put this in the cold frame on a heat mat on, um, I think I'll put a little gravel and then the heat map so this these uh, legs can sit right into the gravel although that would redistribute more of the heat so we'll see we'll check that out in the cold frame now this has a little bit of roots this has a lot of roots what can we do with those guys we could put them in the blue pot I was gonna put the the forest of five in here with this as the big main tree and then a couple of trees out here why don't I just put these in here and we'll have a, a, a twin a twin forest right now just to see if this one stays alive. And I will put this back out in the cold frame as well. Uh, we'll put a little bit of more fresh soil in here uh, and um, we'll get this uh, ready to go out in the cold frame. And uh, again, with the warmer temperatures coming, uh, hopefully we'll have some luck out there. So let me get some fresh soil and we'll get those two in a pot. I have the screens in there already. Kind of layer of my coarse soil there. And now let's get some of the finer soil. And this soil has little bits of akadama in it as well. So it'll have good moisture retention for these trees, these maples that love so much of that uh, water. Let's cut this high root off this high root off up there and let's leave the rest for right now note this big one right here too see this big one that one doesn't look like it's doing a whole lot all right the rest i want to leave alone so let me see this way Put this in the pot this way. Get these roots spread out a little bit. Yeah, they should do okay in there. I might need a rock to put on here. So here we go. Let's get this secure in there. And we got a little bit of weight there that wants to pop back up. Lift up just a little bit, get that mound underneath that part where it wants to pop up. And that's a little bit better. We'll add some more soil in a moment, but we gotta get this one in very gently. And I really don't care where this one goes. We just wanna make sure these roots try to stay alive here. This is kind of a Hail Mary right here, this one. We'd like to grow most of our forests and such in threes. I only have these two left, so I'm not gonna be able to do that. Ultimately, I'm not concerned, because we just want these to survive. So this is mounded pretty good, but to keep these in there, I believe I need to do that. Okay, so I have these leaves growing right there. Let's get rid of that right there. We don't need that height. And this is a super tall tree with the, the, the leaves that are starting to grow here, but I got a bud down there. I got two buds right there, there, and there. Um, the minimum right there. Let's do this one. 
And if these don't survive, I got these two down here and this one's already grown and we'll see if more stuff grows down here. So we'll just leave it right like that. We're not gonna create any more stress for this double. So we've got a double Japanese maple tree. Um, maybe, maybe we'll get this in a forest next year when these catch up. So we just have to go to plan B. So I'm gonna get some water on these and we gotta get these out into the cold frame and I gotta get that heat mat going because I want thing that, that to have as much success as possible with some warmth. Let's get some water. This is starting to leak through the towel now. We lift this up. All right, not the prettiest specimens in the world, but we hope to get there, right? So these two had some roots, a lot on that one. That one's probably gonna be the most successful, right? This one had a couple, three roots on there that could produce more. We'll keep this in the cold frame on the mat as well with this one. This one, they'll go right on where this mat is gonna be and we'll have the warmth and hopefully keep these alive. We'll have to make sure these really stay moist and don't dry out here for the course of their time in the cold frame. And then we'll hope for the best. Time to head out to the cold frame and to finish up with these guys out there. So we have our two heat mats right here. Now I just gotta find my source to plug them on in. And I have that adapter going there. So I'm gonna get this started right now. That's one right there. Since we don't have two uh, at the moment and I can't, I can't find a twofer, let's put this the other direction and we'll just go with one mat. So here we go. And here we go. So we've got the heat mat on the boot tray with the two trees that we just worked on. We'll keep these watered real well. We'll water them maybe out here and get all the extra drips off and put it back on the heat mat. The heat mat is plugged in and we'll slowly warm up and we'll add a little bit of warmth hopefully to this right here. So everything else is where it needs to be. We can close up the cold frame and we can call that a uh, semi-successful uh, uh, bonsai adventure. <laughs> hey, that's gonna do it. Wish me luck on these, okay? Oh, let's uh, hope that they do some good things. In the meantime, I got some more cleanup to do. The room downstairs is a mess. So take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and you know we're gonna catch you really, really soon.